from living in a yurt in the woods of the Netherlands to enjoying sunsets on the beach in Portugal. The life of a digital nomad can change quite a lot in just a few weeks, but is that still possible in 2022? The past two years have been quite challenging for those of us that like to travel, but even so, I've still managed to live in several countries, and with the world opening up, it looks like 2022 is going to be no different. Let me show you how I managed to do it, and how you can make this your life too. In December of last year, I went on a content creator trip to France with a group of friends. It was really amazing to work together with these talented people, and they gave me a lot of inspiration to keep doing what I do. If you didn't know it yet, I also teach yoga, and it just happened that there was another yoga teacher on this trip. She recommended an organization she worked with in the past and thought I would be a good fit. Fast forward a few weeks and here I am. My first destination of 2022, Winterwoods, a pop-up camping in the north of the Netherlands. Living off-grid in traditional Mongolian yurts and working there isn't something an average digital nomad would do, mainly due to the fact that there's nothing digital about it. But that's exactly why I choose to go there. After being stuck in yet another lockdown in the Netherlands, I felt creatively drained and I didn't know what steps to take next. I needed to get out, to be uncomfortable and to just be in touch with nature. It turns out that Winterwoods was the perfect escape. Living here meant lots of exposure to nature, which was exactly what I needed. And it went even further than that. Part of life here was doing and teaching cold water exposure training. It was exhilarating and nothing pulls you more out of your head than a plunge into icy water. And even though my face looks relaxed here, it was pretty challenging. I spent my time chopping wood, teaching yoga, and making sure the guests were comfortable. Then my three weeks out here flew by, and before I knew it, it was time to go back home. But not for long. Portugal was opening up again. So after about a week at home, me and Anne-Marie jumped on a plane, and before we knew it, we were walking on foreign soil once again. Welcome to Ericeira, a beautiful coastal town just about an hour's drive west of Lisbon. Now you might say to yourself, Michelle, there's no way that I can live life like that, but maybe that's not too far away. Due to COVID, you've probably already worked remotely in the past few years, and all you have to do is expand on that. You could ask your boss if you can go fully remote, if he wants you to come back to the office. Just take little steps. You can go to a cafe in town and work from there to experiment. Like if going to another country is just a little bit too big of a step, you can experiment. Uh, cafes would be good then, but you could also go to a different city. You know, take a little city trip and work from there. And you don't even need to tell your boss. As long as the work is done, as long as he sees that you're working, it's all good. But if that is not possible, maybe it is time to set priorities. If you want to keep this job, then maybe you sacrifice travel. But if you want to travel above all else, maybe sacrifice the job. Let's take Sarah, for example. You may have seen her in some of the Columbia videos. She had to go back to the office and couldn't work remote anymore. Argued with her boss. He said no, so she quit. She moved to another company that did allow her to work fully remote. Now she's off enjoying her adventures in Medellin and everywhere else in Colombia. And like I said, I've also done that. I've saved up money last year in order to travel. Worked for a couple of months, quit my job, and flew to Mexico. Worked there, uh, my online job, I'm a yoga teacher as well, so I taught wherever I went. And that's how I started off. I worked on my skills and slowly built my way up to where I am right now. Now there are so many ways that you can work online that I'm not even going to begin 
to mention any of them. You can simply search your job, plus work remotely, and there's thousands of results that will pop up. But in case you need a little bit of inspiration, we've put together a guide with 101 ways for you to become a digital nomad. I'll put the link down below in case you want to check that out. Now maybe your job is a little bit more manual, maybe you have to be there in person, and that's okay. But if you really want to travel and work at the same time, you're going to want to find something that you can do online. But maybe now is the time that you work on some skills. You can find hundreds of courses on Skillshare, you can find them on YouTube. That's where I get my knowledge. If I don't know something, I Google it, I learn, and I apply it in real life. So what's next? With all the beautiful weather and the amazing sunsets, it's hard not to like living here in Ericeira. We'll probably stay here for another few weeks. After that, the schedule's pretty open. We might go to Porto, we might go to Lisbon, we might go down south to the Algarve region. Who knows? Anything is possible with this lifestyle. If you enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments below. Leave a like. If you want to stay updated, hit that, there. Hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.